in this brief clip, I want to tell you about how SPM does this normalization. So the goal is to get from the original image, your T1 image, to a normalized T1 image. That means we need to align the T1 image with a, a normalization template such as this one, uh, such that the final data then will be in the exact same space as the normalization template. So this is normalized data here on the right and the template on the left. And you can see that there's quite a good match in the front of the brain uh, and in the back of the brain. And then in some near, uh, anatomical landmarks such as the corpus callosum here um, that give us a pretty good match. So how does SPM do this? And uh, just as a upfront, we will use a relatively new method that um, uses tissue probability maps to warp the T1 image into not just one template, but six different templates. Uh, so it's a pretty fancy approach um, where we basically um, try to match the size and the position of the of our T1 image to that of a template image or to that of multiple template image images. And that leads to this kind of warping that you can see here. So each arrow indicates the direction in which the original image was warped to match the standard standard image. And then here you can see um, exactly the type of warping that was applied to, in this case, each voxel in this in this 2D slice. And this is done then for the entire brain, uh, for the entire volume of the brain, leading to a normalized image um, in the end. So there's a lot of nonlinearities involved in this uh, to eventually map the overall shape. Now, while there are some older methods available, we are going to use this, this new method in class. Um, that allows us to use much more information that is available via these tissue probability maps. And basically what they are using is, um, they're using a distribution of different um, classes of tissue types that, that are generally distributed in similar fashions across brains. And those include gray matter tissue. This is the gray matter tissue probability map. This is the white matter TPM. So those are fiber tracts. Those are neurons here in the first one. And the cere cerebrospinal fluid uh, TPM, which you can see there's fluid surrounding the brain that's sort of covering it from, from bumps and fluid within the brain um, that is holding the brain afloat. So, so basically we can use this information uh, which gives us an improved spatial normalization in the end. There's three more TPMs that SPM uses. Um, they include uh, sort of the skull, soft tissue, and everything outside of the brain. So it identifies these different classes of, of um, tissue types. And during this identification also simultaneously transfers the image into normalization, uh, normalized space. So it's a unified model, basically. Um, these TPMs, are used as a prior in Bayesian statistics. Uh, and, and this gives us, again, improved normalization outcomes. And they're derived from a large data set, uh, namely the ICSI data set that uses the ICBM 452 atlas and other data. So we're using a lot of information from a large number of brains that are registered to common space to classify the brain into different types of, of tissue, um, basic to segment the brain, right, into these different types of tissue classes. And during the segmentation also align each T1, so each anatomical image, uh, into a normal space with these normalized templates, which gives us an improved normalization. And the model that we're using is called unified segmentation. Um, and it, it does a number of things. It does a bias correction, which there's some biases that we introduce uh, within the scanner. So field homogeneities, in homogeneities, sorry, um, that are then 
uh, corrected. That's the first step of this. So we, we're reducing noise, we're reducing artifacts, intensity, inhomogeneities um, to basically correct for this. And then the next part is we use the tissue probability maps as priors. So again, these are, this is Bayesian statistics. So we have prior probabilities about which part within the brain applies to which um, tissue class. Segment the brain into gray and white matter, as well as cerebrospinal fluid and background and two additional classes. During segmentation, normalization uh, takes place. So we have a more robust and precise uh, alignment to these different tissue classes than, than what was used just uh, five, 10 years ago, um, leading to the simultaneous segmentation and normalization. And here I want to just give you a sort of quick overview of, of how this is done. So we have distributions in terms of the intensity. So this is on the, on the x-axis here. We have an intensity level within the T1 image, within the um, anatomical image that, that is acquired for every scan. And for each intensity, there is a distribution of likelihoods, of probabilities that this voxel then indeed belongs to a specific class. So white matter has a low intensity in a T1 image, whereas air and background has a relatively, as an even lower, and sorry, this is a high intensity here. White matter has a high intensity, whereas background has a low intensity. So zero is down here. That means low, a thousand means high. And then gray matter has a somewhat um, reduced intensity relative to white matter, the green line here. And then again, CSF again is reduced. So we can use these probability distributions in the segmentation um, algorithm. And this allows us then for each voxel to apply a sort of likelihood that it belongs to one or, or the other class. There will be some overlap there, um, but we can optimize obviously situations where the overlap is present. Again, using Bayesian statistics. Um, so here we see white matter regions that fall under this distribution, gray matter falls under this distribution, again, with some overlap here. And then CSF has, has this type of distribution, which we can then identify within the image in the segmentation, which gives us a probability that, that each voxel belongs to some class or other. So what SPM then does is it uses the tissue probability maps and warps these uh, these maps to the images that we give, so, so the subject-specific images, the T1 or anatomical scan. Um, this is what's shown here. To, uh, to, to get a best match between each tissue probability map and the subject's, um, the subject's anatomical scan. So we get these warps here, which I had shown you originally uh, in this clip, and then the images can be the, these warps can be used to transform the subject's brain. So the invor inverse transform warps can be applied um, to the anatomical image to basically squeeze and squish the brain into uh, normalized space. And uh, there are some, some cost functions that SPM uses or um, that, that allow us to select the best type of warping um, to obtain, first of all, segmentation and then normalization to standard space. To look at this outcome, um, the outcome of such a, a segmentation and normalization procedure, so this unified segmentation normalization that SPM uses, uh, since the version SPM 12, by the way, uh, looks like this. So we have the anatomical brains up here, and you can use different types of, of sequences to do this, but we are going to use the T1 sequence here uh, the T1 image that's shown in the first row, column, sorry. And um, this is the gray matter tissue probability map. This is the white matter tissue probability map that's used to get this segmentation result here. And this is the segmented brain. So this is the gray matter only for this uh, exact anatomical image. And this is white matter only for this, for this subject. Uh, and you can see that it looks quite nice. We have only the neurons here 
or only gray matter extracted from this brain and only white matter extracted from this brain and it's it's wonderfully normalized as well and so that is what you should see in your data set when you start working with this